Good evening, guys. Uh, this is a set of Infosys questions where we are going to solve right now. And uh, these are the previous year's questions which was given in exams from different different topics. So before going to start the video, I'm just requesting you all, like for each and every question, I request you to pause for a minute and then uh, go through the question and try the solution and then continue with the video. So today, this is my first question. It's a very good question. Uh, it's a, a topic of trains from a concept, time, speed and distance. So here uh, the question goes on in this way. A train 150 meter long passes a pole in 15 seconds and crosses second train of same length in opposite direction in 12 seconds. So the speed of the second train is what? So this is the question which is asking. So here you need to note a few points here. There is a train which is passing a pole. So when a train is passing a pole, so what is the distance that train tra uh, travels to cross a pole? Its own length, right? So this is the first thing. And the second condition it's given, the same train traveling the same train traveling in a direction crosses the another train which is traveling in the opposite direction. So it's mentioned it's of same length, both are same length. And tell me what is the distance that this train travels to cross the other train? Obviously the train should cross its own length and it should cross the other train's length also, which is nothing but it tra the lengths will add up in this case. The distance traveled by train will be this. So we are going to solve this problem in this way. This is the first it is given. We already know there is only one formula in square time, speed and distance, which is speed equals to distance upon time. The same formula I'm going to apply and I'm going to get the answers. So it is given the first train speed is equals to the length of the train, which is nothing but 150 meters. And it is taking how much time? 15 seconds to cross the pole. So distance upon time. So 150 by 15, you've got 10 meter per second. Now the same thing. So when two trains are crossing each other, which are in opposite directions. So this is a relative speed concept, which is nothing but the train is traveling with S1 speed and the opposite, the train is traveling with S2 speed. And they both were traveling in opposite direction. I can say that speeds will add up here. And it will be it is traveling of both of their lengths and each length it is given as the train length is given as 150 meters. So 150 plus 150, it will be 300. So I'm going to use in this way. So S1 plus S2 equals to L1 plus L2 by time. So we already know first train is 10 km per hour plus S2 equals to 300 upon 12. So S2 will be equals to 300 upon 12 will be 25 minus 10, which is nothing but 15 meter per second. But the problem, the uh, question, it, uh, the options is given in kilometer per hour. So how to convert this into kilometer per hour? So we already know. So converting meter per second into kilometer per hour will be multiplying with 18 by 5. So 15 into 18 by 5 equals to uh, 5 ones, 15 will cancel in 5 in 3 times. So 3 times 18 will be 54 kilometer per hour. So there is one note which you need to remember from a relative speed concept. So if two objects are moving in opposite direction, opposite direction, speeds will be add up. But if they are traveling in the same direction, that means if you are chasing another person, obviously you should move with the extra speed so that to cover, to reach that person. So which means speeds will be subtracted. Difference. So this is the point which you need to remember. 
So this is a very good question and it's very simple. It takes less than one minute and exams to solve. So that's what the speed which we require while solving the problems. Nice. So now we'll move up to second question. So again, I'm requesting you to pause the video for a minute and then proceed with the solution. So let me go with the second question now. This is a question of profit and loss. So here it is given a merchant marks his goods at rupees 600 and allows a discount of 25%. If he still gains 11.11%, then the cost price of the article is what? So here it is given marks his goods at 600. Can I say that that 600 is nothing but marked price and he is given a discount. So discount of how much? 25%. So quickly guys, what is 25% in a fraction? So one fourth, right? So he's given one fourth of 600 as a discount, which is nothing but 150 rupees. So he has given a discount. So out of 600, 150 discount. So obviously how much he's selling for? 600 minus 150, which is 450. So this is nothing but the selling price. So, but he told, it is given, he still got a profit. So, profit means selling price will be greater than cost price. Then only I can say that I got a profit. So, here it is given profit is 11.11% and I know that cost price will be less than selling price and I need to calculate this amount. How? In a traditional way, you can apply a formula, profit percentage formula, which is nothing but selling price minus cost price upon cost price in 200 this is a basic school level way where we used to solve but i'm going to give you another way so profit he's mentioned as 11.11 percent so let me convert this into fraction how so percent right so which is nothing but per century by 100 so 11.11 by 100 is nothing but 1 by 9 so i can say that out of 9 rupees, if you assume 9 rupees as my cost price, out of 9, I got how much profit? 1 rupee. So from this, can I say the selling price is cost price plus profit? So 9 plus 1, 10. If I assume 9 rupees as a cost price, if I sell, if I sell at 10 rupees, I'm getting a profit of 1 rupee. So this is what my idea. So I'm going to use these things while solving the problem here. So assume, uh, same, equate these things with the actual values. So selling price, 10 uh, here, which I'm going to equate with 450 of my original selling price. So now you need to calculate the cost price, which is of nine. So 10 parts is 450, then nine parts is how much? Clearly we know if 10 parts is, if 10 parts is nine, 450, then one part will be 45. So difference of this will be nine parts. So 450 minus 45, which is nothing but 405. This is my required answer. So it is also one of a very good question where we can solve this question also under one minute. So we'll proceed in the same way for a third question. Yeah, this is very Oh, interesting question. Here it is given the number of even factors of n equals to 2 square into 3 square, 3 cube into 5 power 4 will be what? He is asking even factors. He is asking even factors. Remember it. So, how will we be getting even factors? As we already know, in our schooling, there is a formula. If uh, and in a prime factorization, if it is written as a power m into b power n into c power p and so on, we know there is a formula in our schooling number of factors equals to, you need to concentrate on powers of this prime number, prime factors. So powers is m, you need to add 1. Similarly, you need to add 1 to all the powers and you need to multiply them. So this is a formula for number of factors. But the question he asked is even factors. So how to get even factors? 
So what I'm going to do is if I want to get even factors, I'll do this in this way. I'll find the factors and I'll subtract odd factors. So I know how to get odd factors. So from this, I'm going to calculate my even factors. So how to get odd factors? So same thing, if n equals to a power m into b power n into c power p and so on, given, given that a is an even number, assume if it is an even number. So now odd factors equals to need to take powers of the odd prime numbers which is b c and so on so that is n plus 1 into p plus 1 into and so on so this is what the thing i'm going to apply here and i'm going to get my required answer so let me take in this way so factors i'm applying this formula so actual question is given as n equals to 2 square into 3 cube into 5 power 4 where 2 is an even number 3 and 5 two odd numbers are there so number of factors will be take powers of 2 which is 2 plus 1 and power of 3 is 3 3 plus 1 and power of 5 is 4 which is add 1 subtract with odd powers thing so apply that so odd number is uh, in prime factorization two odd numbers 3 and 5 which powers is 3 so add 1 power of 5 is 4 add 1 do this so 3 times 4 times 5 minus 4 times 5 so 3 times 4 is 12 12 5 is 60 60 minus 20 so the even factors are even factors are 40 so i hope you understood what i have solved here so that's how I'm going to get my answers in this way. So this is a formula which you need to remember guys. Sometimes you may get this question straight away in your exams as this is already given last year. So let me assume with the fourth problem. Yeah. So this is my fourth problem and question seems to be a little lengthy. But actual answer is a fraction of seconds you can get the answer when you understand the question. So, requesting you to pause a video for a minute and then continue. So, hope so you have done that and then I'm solving it. So, it is a question of mixtures and allegations. Okay, so the fourth question here says a newly married couple who doesn't know how to cook starts to learn basic cooking. One of them from the couple had 1200 ml of mixture. So he had a 1200 ml of mixture of milk and water, which was in the ratio 5 is to 3. How much amount of water should be added by him or her to make the ratio of new mixture 5 is to 4? So this a problem is very easy. So there is a conventional way how to solve this problem, but I'm not going to do it in that way. So I'm going to concentrate here in this way. It's 1200 ml which is given all milk and water in the ratio 5 is to 3. And later he mentioned how much water needs to be mixed should be added. So he is asking only water. So by then here itself I know that milk, milk is constant throughout. So using this logic going to solve this problem with a fraction of seconds so 5 is to 3 became 5 is to 4 there is no change in milk there is only change in water only change in water how much for 3 he added plus 1 so simple we know milk and water in the ratio 5 is to 3 so the total is 8 parts which is equals to 1200 so what is one part then 1200 by 8 which is 150 so clearly we need to calculate this one part only now so which is nothing but water added is 150 
Amen. So, this is our fourth question. A straight away, very good question. I hope you understand uh, the solution over here. And there are very different type of questions where you need to concentrate on this concept. We'll come up with a similar type of questions in the next video. As of now, we'll continue with our fifth question. Yeah. This question is also, the, this is very easy question where you can solve within fraction of seconds. It's a school level maths problem. So I'm going to solve it within straight away write down guys. So it's given one sixth of half of three fourth of a number is 25. What will be 30 percentage of that number? So, so we'll continue within this way. So he's told one sixth of half of three fourth of a number which is n is equals to 25. Simple. So do the mathematical calculations over here. Cancellations three once, three twice, six goes and twice. So obviously n equals to 25 into 2 into 2 into 4 so which is nothing but uh, it's a 25 uh, 2 50 50 to 100 100 times 4 is 400 so the number n we got now here you need to calculate 30 percentage of n that's it so 30 percentage of n would be so So 30 percentage of n, so which is nothing but 30 percentage of 400. As we already know, percentage means dividing by 100. By 100 is nothing but cancelling two zeros and multiplying remaining numbers. So 30 into 40 is 120. So this is my required answer for this question. Hope you understand these problems. So we'll continue with the other problems in the next video. I hope the better preparation for you so please stay connected with the channel to to improve your skills and to get a place, uh, placement placement in your drives so bye bye guys this is for end for this video